the last hour of uh, this morning session, in fact, the part of the physics is uh, by Zhang Wei Chang. It's going to talk about secret either thing, two about the hydronic beam mechanism. previous talks in this session, my talk is more um, on them, okay? So uh, as we know that we have seen CD violation in uh, both the K-on and the B meson systems. Um, so the question is whether we can also see a similar uh, thing in, in the charm system as well. And also, uh, I don't know, uh, probably you, you also noticed a few years ago there was a, a kind of anomaly uh, people um, observed the big CD violation in the Chan sector um, about six years ago, uh, seven years ago. And so I want to, to take this opportunity to update you uh, what, what, what about the current status and what are our predictions. And moreover, we try to perform uh, a comprehensive analysis to, uh, to all the uh, two body B uh, meson decay modes to see uh, what other. Um, uh, channels or uh, um, modes, decay modes, have uh, also um, CP asymmetries that could be observed in, in the next few years. And this work is done uh, with the Haiyang in the audience there, um, just published recently. Okay, so here's an outline. I will give you some introduction and then uh, tell you the approach that we take for the analysis. And as I said, I will tell you the story about this uh, uh, CP asymmetry difference between KK and PiPi -Pi modes. And then um, I will show you our global fits to all the people favored uh, BMS on DK to two pseudoscalers or one pseudoscalar, one vector branch relations. And from there, we can make predictions and, and also uh, add in some uh, theoretical assumptions. We can make predictions for all the branch ratios and the CP asymmetries for the singly because can be both suppressed decay modes. Okay, so the D meson is an interesting system compared, for example, compared to the B meson system. Um, in the in the D meson decays here, you can see that there's a list of possible decay modes. To the two source together modes, it's about uh, totally is about ten percent. To one vector meson and one pseudo scale is about twenty eight percent, and so on and so forth. And when you add up all these two body decay modes, that's already 63%. And the, the any other hydronic decay modes totally is 84%. And the semi-laptonic decay modes is only 16%. In comparison, the, for the BMS on the dominant decay modes are the semi-laptonic decays. And uh, the, the, like these, these two body decays for the BMS ones are rare. Uh, it's at the 10 to the minus 6 level, the branch ratio. So it's very different. And, and as you see that for the PP and VV modes, it's already about 40% of the total decay rates. So you can see the importance of these decay modes and, and, and that's uh, what we want to understand. So if, if you look at here the, the energy scale, so if the, uh, uh, for example, the meson mass is sufficiently heavy, then uh, there's a good expansion parameter one over uh, the heavy quark mass, and that's, that gives us a heavy quark effective theory. And there's another uh, expansion parameter that's the strong coupling. And again, for sufficiently uh, heavy mass or higher energy, the uh, expansion parameter is good. So we have a perturbative QCD. On the other hand, if the mass or energy is sufficiently small, then there's an, also a good expansion parameter of the momentum over the chirosymmetry breaking scale. Then we have the chiral perturbation theory. Unfortunately, the D meson is sitting in this murky region where it's around 1 GeV, so the heavy quark expansion is no good because it's 1 over 1, and the uh, uh, strong coupling also becomes strong. 
um, and uh, the Cairo Federation doesn't work here. So it's, it's, it, the, the BMS homes are sitting in this awkward region where we don't have a good, uh, at least currently, we don't have a good perturbation formalism to work with. And on top of that, around here, there are many resonances where we, which could contribute to the, for example, the final state rescattering effect, and that, would, that complicates the situation. So instead of using perturbation here, uh, we, uh, there's a formalism actually proposed uh, in the 80s already, again by Hanyang and the collaborators, the, using the flavor SU3 uh, symmetry. We use this, this symmetry to relate different uh, decay uh, amplitudes, and then from there we can make uh, predictions. And so it, in this case, this is a good place to test different kinds of models. Um, so the, the purposes of this uh, new work it, uh, are twofold. The first one is we, we want to update our analysis of D2PP decays. Um, because uh, after so many years, we have uh, more experimental, uh, new experimental inputs. Um, also, we include uh, more uncertainties, more reliable uncertainties about the, the penguin exchange diagrams, which we didn't uh, include in, in the analysis done in 2012. And so, uh, after this, we check whether uh, new physics is still required to explain the observed CPU symmetry. And the second thing is that we want to extend this analysis to uh, D2 VP decays. And for this decays, um, a few years ago, because uh, uh, before the measurement uh, of this uh, D sub S to pi plus rho zero mode given by Babar, there is no way that we can distinguish, there are two types of annihilation diagrams which we couldn't distinguish at that time. But after knowing this uh, new data around the 2016, then we are able to uh, identify, or we, we, are able, we were able to extract uh, individually the amplitudes. Then um, now we can make predictions for the CP violation, uh, CP asymmetries in the VP sectors as well. Okay, so now it's uh, about our approach. So what we do is we first, from the decay branch ratios, we extract the amplitudes using these formulas for different, uh, like PP is this formula and VP is the, the lower formula. And the, the main difference, as you can see, one thing is about this momentum factor here is to the third power. That's because of the, uh, that the VP mode is in the P wave. And another difference is uh, here, you have to sum over the polarization of the vector. And then um, after the summation, you will find that in the denominator here, it, it's the vector has some uh, mass in the final state that appears in the denominator instead of the initial state uh, meson. But anyway, so these vectors are the phase space vectors. So in some sense, we already extract or, or remove the SU3 breaking vectors in the, um, in the, in the phase space. And so we extract these uh, amplitudes, and we assume that uh, the SU3 symmetry is a, a pretty good approximate symmetry at the amplitude level. So uh, we, we, we assume the uh, decay strength is about the same, and the, um, the associated strong phase should be the same if the topology is the same. So here are the types of diagrams that we have for uh, the, all, all those decays. We have the uh, color allowed tree diagram, color suppressed uh, tree diagram, and the exchange diagram, where they exchange a W boson, and the annihilation diagram. These are the tree type diagrams. And the, the lower ones are loop type. Uh, they involve some loop uh, in the process. So, so uh, for, for each uh, type of diagram, we assume it, it could have uh, independent decay strengths and an independent uh, strong phase. So for the uh, two-body D decays, we can classify them into the three uh, classes, Kabibo favored. Here's one example, because uh, here the involved uh, secant factor is about one. And the second class is singly Kabibo suppressed, and the involved Kabibo, uh, uh, the involved secant factors are this one or this one, and both of them are about 0.2, about 20%. Um, so there are two possibilities. 
you can, you can have this this kind of a combination or the other type of com combination. So uh, corresponding to this uh, diagram here, you can either have SS bar quarks or uh, DD bar quarks. They they have the same strengths as far as the secant is concerned. And then finally, you uh, we have doubly people suppressed. And one special thing about this singly compatible suppressed mode is that, as I said, there are two kinds of two possible combinations. So even even if you just have three amplitudes, because of these two, and, and there is a small tiny phase difference between the, the, the two combinations, even if you you have only just the three amplitudes, as long as you have both type of diagrams, then they can interfere to give you CP asymmetry. Not to mention that you can also consider the painting contributions. And if you, after some uh, simple algebra, you can calculate the direct CP asymmetry in this case, then you see that, as I said, as long as you have these combinations, and then when you, when you calculate, you, 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 uh, the CP asymmetry is proportional to any part of this, kind of this, this uh, uh, special Yaw's uh, combination. And uh, you can uh, simplify it, and you find that uh, it's at most at the level of 10 to the minus 3. So it's pretty small. Again, compared to the B meson system where usually you have a, a few to a few tens of percent of uh, CP symmetry here, it's, it's pretty small. It's at the a per mil level. Okay, so if some channel is measured to have a sizable CP symmetry, of course you would you, you suspect that there might be some new physics at work. Okay, but as far as the branching ratio is concerned, um, because of the G mechanism, as I said, the, the, there's a the, the, um, uh, the, these two combinations. They are almost the same. I mean, they are the same. Uh, the the magnitudes are the same, but they, they are opposite by by the sign. And um, also, this combination is very small in comparison. So you can ignore. Uh, as far as the branch ratio is concerned, you can ignore the penguin, the loop diagram contributions. And um, so most of them, just the branch ratio part can be explained by just considering the tree type diagrams. Okay? And um, one, one word is, is that in the case of VP case, because the spectator quark can end up in either a pseudo scalar or a vector meson in the final state. So we should distinguish the two type, these two types of diagrams. Therefore, uh, when you go to the VP case, instead of just a T, you have the TP type and TB type. Uh, they're different. And here I give you one simple example where uh, this one, the first channel is a Kabibo favor and the second one is a Kabibo, singly Kabibo suppressed nodes. And they involve the same diagrams of the same topology. The only difference is the flavor. So you can see here is S quark, but here is a D quark. But so both of them involve tree diagram plus exchange diagram, and they are related by the SU3. So in our formalism, we say that these two diagrams have the same strength apart from the CTM, and likewise these two have the same strength and the phase. So what we do is we, we perform a chi-square fit to the, all the uh, decay branching ratios, and all decay branching ratios only. We don't fit to the CP symmetry. So we just fit to the branch ratios. So from there we can extract the decay strength, the magnitude of the amplitude, and also the, the strong phase of the amplitude. And since we only fit to the uh, decay variation ratios, um, there could be a degeneracy in the strong phase. Namely, if you flip the strong phases of all the amplitudes simultaneously, you still get the same decay variation ratio. So there is this ambiguity. Um, okay, and then we also in include some SU3 breaking factors because that's suggested by data, required by data. Okay, and in particular, uh, we, we uh, found that, that this uh, PE's penguin exchange diagram, this diagram in particular can be enhanced due to the final state rescattering. And so, so we, we uh, in particular, we include this contribution and we found that uh, we can use this to, to explain uh, the large uh, CP asymmetry difference in the PP system. And then, as I, as I said in the beginning, we make predictions for all the decay modes, their branch ratios and CP asymmetry, so they can be tested in the future data. So first, let me tell you, there's a long-standing problem for the K plus, K minus, and pi plus, pi minus mode. These modes, when you 
decompose in, the, in, the, in our language, you can see that they are basically the same, except that um, there is a, a sign difference, this combination and this combination. The, 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 these are the lambda s is, is, is the a product of the CK factors. So other than the, such a difference, uh, they are basically the same. They involve the same type of flavor diagrams. And in particular, if you go to the flavor SU3 limit, then um, since they are just opposite by the sign, so you, you, you can write it like that, this, this combination involving the D quark or this combination involving the S quark, okay, they, they differ by a minus sign. So if you ignore the penguin contributions, and as I said, we could as far as the branch ratio is concerned, then these two decay modes should have roughly the same decay branch, uh, decay rate or decay branch ratio. But the, the fact is that the data tells us that there is a, a big difference between these two decay modes. The KD mode is, has a larger rate than the pi pi mode by a factor of almost three. And that's puzzling because the KK mode has a smaller phase space and the pi pi mode has a bigger phase space. So it should be the other way around. But the data tells us that no, it, 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 it's the KK mode that is fav more favored. Okay, so, so that, that's a puzzle to, uh, to uh, people. Okay, let, let me uh, stop there for a moment and I will tell you our explanation later. Now, this, uh, let me mention the CP asymmetry. Uh, well, it's defined as usually in this way. And, and um, this famous CP asymmetry difference is between the K plus, K minus, and pi plus, pi minus mode. And the reason that people consider such a CP asymmetry difference is because of three reasons. One is that if they have a common systematic errors, they will they can cancel each other. And also, the, uh, in, for individual modes, it involves this combination. But if, when you take the difference, it's this uh, induced the CP asymmetry multiplied by the the uh, difference of the average uh, lifetime. I mean, ever, average de decay time. So here, th this one is smaller. So the dependence on the indirect CP asymmetry is is less compared to the individual modes. And another thing is that I, I mentioned they have opposite uh, CP asymmetries because of the because of the this uh, 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 well if you consider the penguin contributions for the CP asymmetries then they have opposite rel relative opposite signs. So the, so uh, in this case if you take the difference you get a, a, a larger value. Okay. So this is the data from seven years ago. Uh, so first, the uh, LCD reports their data, and then followed by uh, uh, CDF and, and, uh, and uh, uh, Bell. And the world average at that time was minus 0.678%. Okay, so in other words, six, minus six, almost minus seven times 10 to minus three. And this is uh, almost five sigma away from the CP, no CP violation. So almost we established the violation at that, in, the, in this um, case at that time. And immediately after that, about 30 paper theory papers appear, and some of them invoke uh, new physics to explain why the CPS symmetry difference is so large. And also there are other papers, they try to evaluate the uh, predictions within the STEM model, including uh, my paper with Haiyang. Um, so let me here, let me just mention two explanations within the standalone because now we know that uh, later on we know that there's no, that the CSMH durian becomes smaller. So the first one was by this group and they basically they just say that uh, among the penguin diagrams, different types of penguin diagrams have different uh, magnitudes. So the D type and S type, their difference is almost 50% of the tree diagram. And they need this to explain the, the, the uh, well, they, they need two things. One is to explain the, the rate disparity that I mentioned. KK somehow is bigger than pi pi. And another is large penguin, the sum of penguin diagrams to explain the CP asymmetry. And this is a bit hard to understand why this difference could be 50%, because that tells you that at least one of them is of the same order as the tree diagram. And th th that's difficult to understand why the one loop contribution is as big as the tree uh, diagram. And th the second explanation by this group is somewhat similar, 
They say that, okay, this should be small, as normally expected, but they somehow they say that the, the, the bottom pipe penguin, where the, the bottom quark is running in the loop, should be of the same order as the tree. So, so anyway, in, in both cases, they, they try to invoke big uh, penguin contributions, but without good explanation. Here they say that for some unforeseen QCD effects. So what about our explanation? First, we say that, well, as many other people uh, uh, um, propose, this, uh, there should be SU3 breaking in the tree diagram. So if you compare these two, within the factorization, you can write down like this ratio of decay uh, constants and uh, 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 fault factors. And, but you find that this ratio is only about 1.4. After you square it, it's about two. So you cannot explain the discrepancy of three. So uh, the second ingredient that we found is that we took the hint from another decay mode, D to K0, K0 bar. And when you decompose this uh, amplitude, you find that it has this pair of similar amplitudes. And the only difference is here is uh, VUD times VCD, and here is VUS times VCS. Again, they differ just by a sign. So, in the strict SU3 symmetry, namely if we assume this uh, ED type of diagram is the same as ES, this is the same as that, then because of the relative minus sign, they should cancel each other. You should expect zero branch ratio in, for this mode. But that's not what the data tells us. The data tells us it, it is non-zero. So this uh, tells us that we should consider the SU3 breaking between the two diagrams. And remember, up to now, we, have, we made no attempt to explain the CBS emission difference at all. So now, to, to, to uh, explain the CBS emission, we need to uh, uh, include the penguin contributions as well. Even though they are very small, they don't really contribute much to the branch ratio. But when you calculate the CBS symmetry because of the interference, um, uh, you, you get the interference from the two types of diagrams. So, but if you just uh, um, use formation calculation, you will see that these diagrams compared to the trees about a few percent level. But for the PE diagrams, we found that, uh, well, uh, from long, long time ago, people found that you can have this kind of uh, final state rescattering effect. So you start with a tree diagram up to this level, there's a tree decay, but then they, the final state particles, they rescatter to to go to the eventually another uh, final state. And this kind of uh, diagram is topologically is the same as the penguin exchange diagram because uh, you just sort of massage the diagram, you, you can see that there is a one loop here. So that's a penguin exchange diagram. So, so we, we, we say that you can, through such kind of uh, rescattering, you can enhance the penguin annihilation diagrams. So we propose that maybe this uh, penguin exchange is the, about the same order as the exchange diagram, and then um, that can enlarge the CD violation. Okay, so uh, well, this this is the slide from uh, 2013 uh, FPCP. So at that time, uh, we made a prediction that uh, the CD symmetry difference should be either well, we found two possible solutions. One is about minus 0.14, and the other is minus 0.15. And the data was minus 0.68%. So, so there's no way that we can accommodate. And we said even if we enlarge the penguin annihilation so large that it is the same as a tree, then we can at most get to minus 0.27. So there's no way we could explain the data. So people, that's why people thought uh, it must be new physics. Okay, this is the data in 2012 again. And this is the next year. LCB updated their data. Now it comes down to minus 0.33. So it gets, it's getting closer to our prediction. So that's 1.5 sigma from our prediction. And this year, the world average is minus 0.16. Well, I didn't report the individual data from, the individual data from LCB is minus 0.15, exactly the same as our central value uh, uh, of one of our predictions. So anyway, so now it's consistent with our prediction um, in 2012. And also because of the better precision, now this is the first uh, observed 
of the receiver symmetry in the charm system. Okay, now I mean what? All right, so <laughs> so first about the PV modes, we extract from data these uh, amplitudes, magnitude, and uh, strong phases. But we found that uh, there should be uh, uh, strong um, SU3 breaking in diagrams other than the tree, because you see from the data we extract, the tree, the T diagram is like this, and the C diagram is like, like that. But uh, the, if you just use the uh, naive factorization calculation, you found that the T is agrees with our extraction, but the, the C is very different. So you, we know that uh, we cannot trust the conversion in this case. And also, um, the short distance exchange and elevation uh, diagrams are usually surprised that they receive large one of MC corrections from final state correction. And well, let me, uh, here I just want to flash that is to show you that we include the SU3 breaking factors in all the decay amplitudes. And so here is our prediction for the branch room ratios, just uh, strictly SU3 or including SU3 breaking. So you can see the uh, here I, I uh, highlight certain modes where you can see significant improvement from SU3 symmetry to SU3 breaking uh, with the experiments. Okay, as I said, we include, uh, we, we assume that the long distance contribution of the P penguin exchange diagram is about the same as exchange, so that, that's that. And uh, th now, th in this year, we include uh, a bigger uncertainties for, for the amplitudes and the strong phase. And now is our new prediction for the CD symmetry difference. So the, the magnitude come, comes down a little bit, but still consistent with the, the current world average within one sigma. And uh, we here is a list of all the uh, CD symmetries for the single people suppressed mouse. And um, again, you can see how we, we start with tree level only, and we add a penguin diagram, and so on and so forth. And uh, um, so here is our final prediction, and we compare with other people's uh, predictions. Okay. So th this can be tested in, by the future data. And one particular thing is, again, about this uh, D to K short, K short decay modes, um, because remember our explanation is that ED and ES could be different. And so our prediction is this value, about minus one ten times ten to the minus three. In comparison, this is other group, some other groups' predictions. It's very different. Uh, in particular, it's different in size. So uh, the data can tell us which one is correct. And here I list more predictions. For example, this one is by Xiangnan Li again. Uh, their formula is, is very close to ours, but uh, you see it's different by a, a minus sign. So uh, the data will tell us. Th this is the current data, and you see that the error bars are still huge. We, there's no conclusion. About the VB modes, again, here is a list of all the uh, extracted uh, data, and uh, extracted the uh, theory parameters. And you see that we have six possible solutions. And among, across the six solutions, some uh, parameters are pretty stable in the fits. These are pretty stable. And uh, one thing that I want to mention is that Rossner, uh, uh, based on some G parity uh, argument, uh, he said that this uh, EV diagram should be roughly the same as EP up to, up, uh, up to a minus sign. But the current data tells us that it's not the case. There, there is a non trivial relative phase between the two. OK, and um, so based on the fits, we made predictions. First, for the Kabibo favorite modes, and we found that uh, this is data and uh, this is our predictions. It's, the, the, it's different. And the reason uh, we think that th this was measured a long time ago, about 30 years ago, so we think this number should be updated. Um, maybe it will agree with our prediction. We'll see. And this became most, again, it's, uh, our prediction is smaller than that. But based upon some amplitude, some rule among three of the decay modes here, uh, we made a conservative prediction that the branch ratio should be between these two values. So again, you see this central value is bigger than our upper bound, of the, although there is, a, again, a big uh, error here. And finally, uh, they, for, for these two uh, decay modes, you see they, they, they are similar, but the, they differ by a relative minus sign. And uh, this one has a smaller branch ratio, this one is bigger. So this tells us that the AV and AP diagrams are roughly in 
uh, in the same direction, but they have roughly the same phase. Okay, so in general, we found that there, going to the single capillo suppressed mode, we found that there's no need to include the uh, SU3 breaking factor. Okay, and uh, uh, from these three modes, you see that this branch ratio is large, and this is uh, in the middle, and this is small. But they involve similar uh, combinations of CP and the CD. Uh, here, you can ignore exchange because it's smaller than the C diagrams. So this tells us that CP and CV should, they tell us that they, they should have uh, a, a similar phase. And that's why we uh, eventually we only kept the third and the sixth solution in our predictions. But you see that uh, the prediction for this, again, the K0, K0 mode is it, no good. And so here, similar to the PP sector, we need to invoke the uh, SU3 breaking between the two types of exchange diagrams. And here, uh, if you look at these two uh, decay modes, you see that uh, T, they involve the same TV plus CP. They, they have opposite uh, phase, so there is a destructive interference between these two. And there is a destructive reverse constructive interference here. But somehow, this branch ratio is smaller and this branch ratio is bigger. So this tells us that it is, relative, it is very important uh, the, to know the relative phase between this combination and this combination. Again, no, so from here, again, we, we found that the third and sixth solutions are better. Um, and finally here, uh, uh, the, because the CP diagram is bigger than the analysis diagram. So these two channels should be roughly the same because you can ignore the rest. So they should have the same ratio ratio. The data tells us that they are they're quite different. Our predictions are here. They should be roughly the same. So we, for this, we will see what uh, the future data tell us. Um, so. In the end, after including all the SU3 breaking factors, we make our predictions for the branch ratios. And here, again, is the data. And in the middle is some other group's predictions. Here, I highlight them to, to show you that um, there, there is some uh, difference between the two theory predictions or between the theory and the experimental data. And finally, the CD asymmetry. Uh, these are the, we propose to be the golden modes because uh, first they have large branch, sufficiently large branch ratios and their CP asymmetries according to our predictions are also uh, of order 10 to the minus 3. So it should be able to be uh, measured in the near future. And finally, the, uh, uh, this is similar to the CP asymmetry in the PV sector. We found that the difference between these two is also uh, about minus 1.5 times, times 10 to minus 3. So again, uh, the experimentalists should be able to see it soon. OK, so uh, here's that summary. So we updated our analysis for the, uh, in particular for the single people suppressed D decay to PP or VP modes. And we've, I told you that the current measurement of this CP asymmetry difference is consistent with our prediction from seven years ago and also uh, our prediction again this year. And we employ the uh, SU3 symmetry and also include some symmetry breaking factors as required by data, and then make predictions for all the branching ratios and the CD symmetry. And finally, I told you some golden modes that uh, could be measured, could be observed in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. Question? So. For the paper and the KK, this ratio, is there a possibility that there are uh, some scholar, I mean, non strange or strange scholar or vector measure around uh, 1.8 GB can interfere, can contribute? For example, F0, the highest excited state of F0 can decay to KK and pi pi. I think. Uh, yeah, but that's, uh, that's the exchange. Oops. That's the exchange diagram that I mentioned uh, earlier. Yes, indeed, there there could be some resonance contribution like this diagram, like this diagram here. Here you could have a resonance, so it's scattering from KK to pi pi. 
something like this. Yeah, but do you, do you include the, include the, the disvergence effect? Well, we, we, tree, we could, uh, in this formalism, we don't calculate this kind of, uh, because as long as they have the same flavor topology, we lump them together into the same diagram. So we cannot tell which individual contributor it is. Yeah. Uh, uh, when, when you calculate D to K short, K short CP asymmetry, right. uh, did you assume that uh, uh, lambda D plus lambda S is equal to zero? No, 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 of no. course not. No. There, there's a tiny difference. Okay. Uh, sorry, no, no uh, about uh, not the amplitude, the uh, CKM factor. CK, yeah, the CKM factor, lambda D is not equal, exactly equal to lambda S. Okay, that's the answer. Can we again? Now we have a very important session for photo, right? Yeah, photo. photo just a, we're, we're all lying here. Just, yeah, so uh, take, yeah, yeah. just a move.